Hello, this is Joe Polish, president of Piranha Marketing, and today I'm sitting across the table from a man by the name of Dan Sullivan, who is the president of Strategic Coach. Dan, thanks for taking the time to do our second interview, which I've been looking forward to doing this one because I always enjoy talking with you. Well, Joe, thanks a lot. I'm really looking forward to this, too. Excellent. One of the first things I want to uh, just ask you is, you know, what is the Strategic Coach program and who is Dan Sullivan? Well, I think that the best way, Joe, to think about the strategic coach is that it is a completely custom-designed lifetime school for highly successful entrepreneurs. It's the school that every entrepreneur wished that they had had when they were a kid, something that would just take a look at their particular future, take a look at their particular unique abilities, and create a path for them to run on that completely liberates them, actually frees them up in all parts of their life. And because I'm an entrepreneur, I really designed this school for myself. Basically, I'm teaching something that I designed for myself over a 28-year period. So I started back in 1974 as an entrepreneur. And I often say that the two ingredients that an entrepreneur needs to get started are complete confidence and complete ignorance because I really qualified and I just jumped into the deep end of the pool And I discovered five seconds later that I didn't have any strokes. I barely knew how to keep my head above water. And as a result of that, over a 10-year period, I went through two bankruptcies. I went through a divorce. I was just hanging on by my fingernails. But over that period of time, because I had quite a bit of determination, which I find is the key element in all entrepreneurs, I was able to formulate a success plan for myself. And because that plan came from going from failure to success, I kind of understand the whole landscape of what entrepreneurs go through psychologically and emotionally in going and taking every part of their life and turning it from a failure factor into a success factor. And as I began doing this for myself and talking about it in public audiences, in one-on-one situations, people said, you know, could you teach me what you've learned? And so what I've done is over a period of a quarter of a century, I've actually put that into a program that we now have all over North America. We have people who come from all over the world come to the Strategic Coach Program. And so that's basically, in a nutshell, what it is. If you're out there listening, that if you thought about the perfect school that was just designed for you, the one that you never found in public school, the one you never found in college, the one you never found in any kind of training program, that's what the Strategic Coach is. It's that perfect school. You mentioned one thing, though, early on. You said, highly successful entrepreneurs. And what I'd like to do is define that before we get into more of this school and everything that you could actually talk about. What is a highly successful entrepreneur? What is an entrepreneur? Well, you know, I've been asked that question a lot, and I have an answer which may kind of surprise people that fundamentally entrepreneurs kill off all possibility except that vision that they have that drives them forward. And they will change themselves. They will transform their situation. They will transform their abilities. They will transform their teams. They will transform even their physical location to get to that vision. And it's not everybody who has that. It's a small portion of the population. And they come in all shapes and sizes. There's quiet entrepreneurs. There's loud entrepreneurs. There's people who are just complete and total gentlemen or gentle ladies. They come big. They come small. They come in all races. They come in all colors, all religions. But the one quality that they have right at the center is that they kill off any other possibility in their life except actually succeeding with that vision. I remember after my second bankruptcy, I had a little interesting interview with my bank manager, (laughs) who I got to know more than I liked back in those days. He was a very, very compassionate guy, and his name was Dan, too. So he said, Dan, isn't it now about time that you really thought about getting a job? (laughs) And I said, no, it's not about time, and I want to tell you it's never going to be time. I just don't know enough yet. And I said, but I know a lot more than I used to know, and I think I'm almost there. He just kind of shook his head, and he says, well, you got something inside that I sure don't have. He said, I would never put up with the punishment and beating that you've put up with. Now, that's one side of being an entrepreneur, and there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are a lot smarter than I am. So they didn't come in stupid. They came in actually really quite smart. But even with the smart ones, what I notice is that they become extraordinarily successful and the success actually traps them into some habits. It actually traps them into some expectations. And then they hit a ceiling. And one of the main concepts in our program is the thing that I call the ceiling of complexity. 
and they almost get as frustrated and even more desperate sometimes when they hit that ceiling of complexity after they've been successful for so long that they also have to then go through a transformation that is not really comfortable for them. So having said that, basically, even if someone would have given you $10 million <laughs> at the time, it would have not squashed that desire to be an entrepreneur. There was something deep inside. For, for me, Joe, that would have been absolutely meaningless because the vision was one of freedom. And I know that $10 million would have come with a lot of <laughs> strings attached. I've often said, Joe, you were the one who put me on to what this program actually does. If I had to choose one word that is at the very center of what the strategic coach experience is all about, it's freedom. I just had an audience several weeks ago, and I said, you know something, you play a trick on yourself when you become an entrepreneur, because essentially why you become an entrepreneur is a burning passion for freedom personal freedom. And everybody defines that in their own way, and they've got their own images that go along with that freedom. But what it means is freedom of their time, freedom of relationship, freedom of money. And I said, so when they become entrepreneurs, it's that passion to be free that gets them into the game. But once they're into the game, all of a sudden, their mind has to kind of shift focus, and it has to shift onto success and onto money because those are going to be the necessary ingredients right. of actually becoming more free. And what happens to them, because that becomes so intense and they become so preoccupying that they get their mind on money and on success, that after a while it's not about freedom anymore, it's about money and success. Paradoxically, what actually happens is that they start giving up their freedom to get the money. Right. They start giving up their freedom to get the success. So they end up with their money and they end up with their success but the price that they've paid for that in terms of how they've tied themselves down and how they've taken away all the enjoyment of life and how they've taken away all their freedom of operation means that money and success could not have been the goal. And what we do in the program is we reverse the clock. We say, okay, you've got the money, you've got the success, and now what we're going to do is we're going to pull a magic trick on you because we're going to take you right back to the beginning now when it was all about freedom, except this time you have the money and success that will propel your freedom the way you want it. Well, I mean, actually, that's quite a big claim that I could see some people listening to this thinking, well, you know, that sounds really nice, but I don't know if that's actually the case. I mean, let's describe what you call the ceiling of complexity because the truth is some of these drives, some of this just intensity that gets us going in the beginning and earns some entrepreneurs, in many cases, large sums of money and toys and all kinds of stuff, it doesn't work long term after they've hit that point. I mean, what is the ceiling of complexity? Let's just drop back a point and let's take a look at how the entrepreneur actually operates. The entrepreneur is a creature of two realms, which are very, very different from the general public. They're a creature of a realm called the imagination, and they're creatures of the future. And basically, what propels entrepreneurs is that they see things before there's any evidence that those things can actually exist. So what they do is that they use their minds to propel them forward into the future. What that requires, of course, is that they have to scramble and they have to work and they have to invest and they have to organize to actually give physical reality to their imagination. But they can never quite catch up to it. And then in the early stages of their career, they make very, very rapid progress because they're living in a fairly simple form right at the beginning. They don't have a lot of infrastructure around them. Their time is more or less theirs to use the way they want to. They're in very much of a selling mode in the early part of their career. They're out there selling futures to other people. Basically, you know, I want you to bet on me that I can help you into your future. Right. And I mean, that's essentially what I'm doing in this interview. I'm making a pitch that if you go with me, I can get you to the future that you want. Well, that's what all entrepreneurs do. I'm simply being an entrepreneur in this interview because I'm simply role modeling what every entrepreneur does, and that is that I've got a way for you to achieve your dreams, achieve certain kinds of benefits that you can't get anywhere else. But what happens as they start becoming successful, they have to go through transaction after transaction after transaction after transaction in the sense that they have to take on projects, they have to sell products, they have to sell services. 
And every one of those transactions takes on a little bit of complexity. There's details to pay attention to. There's paperwork that goes with it. There's computer files that go with it. And then there's a job. And then there's servicing requirements. And then there's a job. And pretty soon, they're creating the structure around them that was necessary for them to actually bring into reality what they were promising and get into the future. And then all at once they realize that all their time, which used to be just going out there and delivering the message in the marketplace, they don't have that time anymore. And they're being pulled right back into the system that they've created. And after a while, instead of the system being the creature that assists them, they are now a prisoner of the creature. And then once you hit that, then you're the ceiling of complexity because you're at a stage now where you're seeing bigger opportunities than you ever saw before, and you can't get to them. There's something missing. It's like 90%, and it's almost like you can reach out and touch it, but you can't quite get there because the system that you have can't take on another activity. It can't free you up for the necessary five days just to go away for five days and think clearly. You're not freed up to do that anymore. And that's what I see whether you came through the hard way, which I did, or you came the smart way, which many entrepreneurs do, all of us reach that point where what we can see is beyond our grasp. And at that point, it almost seems like everything that we've done up until that point is discounted. That's a great introduction in terms of getting people that are listening to understand if any of that even makes sense to them or they relate to that. To me, it's almost like golden handcuffs. To the outside world... Some of the entrepreneurs that are highly successful financially, people think they just got it made, but there's that inner feeling that something's not right. I'm not reaching my potential. I'm not doing what I want to do. I don't really have true freedom. I want to say a couple of things about me and the reason I wanted to sit down and do an interview with you. I've interviewed a lot of people. I have my Genius Network series, and I've interviewed well over 100 heavily successful, some very, very wealthy, multimillionaire entrepreneurs coaches, book authors, very famous in the business world, and some really smart individuals. And if there's any trainer, if there's any individual that understands the mindset of entrepreneurs better than anyone I've ever met, it is certainly you, which is why it's always a pleasure to sit down and just hear your philosophies and hear your thoughts. I mean, I've been in the Strategic Coach Program for more than five years, and I'm not somebody that is really that much of a belonger to go and get someone to be a mentor. I like mentors, but I like people that I think are as bright or brighter than me and can really guide me. And the Strategic Coach really has been the single most powerful influence on my mindset for my business in my personal life. It's really been a transforming experience for me. And so a question that I wanted to ask you is what led to the creation of the Strategic Coach Program? I mean, why did you choose to target successful, in many cases, very successful entrepreneurs as your candidates for the program versus all the other people in the world that you could help? Well, there's actually a couple reasons for that. One of them was that I have sort of a short attention span for getting results. <laughs> and I think it's actually a characteristic of a lot of entrepreneurs is that you want results real fast. And I noticed when I first started my coaching program, this is back in the 1970s, that I actually tried out a lot of different folks. I mean, I talked to politicians. I actually had cabinet ministers at the federal level. I had bureaucrats. I had various kinds of people ahead of organizations. And what I noticed is that they had a hard time making decisions. And it wasn't because they as individuals weren't decisive. It was because they were in organizations that did not allow them to be decisive. And there wasn't one of them who I could say, what do you think? Do you think that's a really good deal? And they said, well, I'll take it in front of the committee meeting and we'll see what's going. Right. Or, well, that'll be $10,000, you know, to get going. And they said, well, I'll put in a requisition for the check. Or when we've done it, send in an invoice and we'll pay you. And I said, no, no way. Because, see, Joe, that's not a partnership. And the way that I look at everybody who comes into the strategic coach is that I'm a partner with that person. I mean, there's a sort of teacher-student relationship, but that's not actually what happens in the strategic coach. When you come into the coach program, you're actually entering into a partnership. And what you're bringing into the program is your dreams. The number one thing is that you're bringing your dreams into the program. And what I'm going to suggest to you is that my part of the partnership, when you bring your dreams into the program, is that the best way to describe it would be like an operating system like Windows. Windows is a single operating system. 
But in that operating system, you can play 50,000 different programs. So every kind of unique program that comes into that operating system is activated and it's kind of propelled forward. And all of a sudden, there's all sorts of dimensions to that program that you can access. And I say, well, this is the same thing that happens with the entrepreneurs who come into the strategic coach program. I have to sell them on something. And what I really want to sell you on is your future. And because there's a lot of entrepreneurs, as ambitious as they are, as successful as they are, role models for hundreds of people actually aren't sold on their own future. They're actually kind of uncertain about their own future. Well, what if someone says right now that, well, okay, you know, this is another time management seminar. It kind of sounds maybe a little touchy-feely. You know, here's a guy here that says he knows an enormous amount about highly successful entrepreneurs. And, of course, I'm playing devil's advocate here. And they're thinking, well, he's trying to sell me something. I just want the secret. Tell me what the big key is. You're the smart guy. You have 25 years experience coaching some of the world's top entrepreneurs. What do we need the strategic coach for? Why can't you just give them an answer and boom, they can go out and just make things better and eliminate all the stress and complexity? Mm -hmm. You use the word secret. There's actually two secrets. There's a secret that we have and there's a secret that the customer has. It's when you put the two secrets together that you actually get the answer. And the secret that the customer or the client who comes into the coach program has is that they have a thing that I call unique ability. They have a thing that they do, which nobody else on the planet does. And this secret is inside of them, and it's the reason for their success. They have only one problem, is that they're too close to it, and they actually don't know what their secret is. So they probably operate at 10 or 15 percent potential at any given time simply because they're motivated by their unique ability. But since they don't know what it is, they actually can't access it. They actually can't communicate from the standpoint of their unique ability. It's kind of like there's this amazing genius. I don't use it often, but I'll use the word genius. And what genius is, there's something they know how to do, which other people just marvel at, and yet it comes to them so easily that they discount it. Well, anybody in the world can do that. And I said, well, the fact is nobody in the world can do it. You're the only one who can do it. And I have to sell them on that because they've been commoditized. You see, a lot of entrepreneurs live in a commoditized world where they sell commodities, products or services. One of the dangers of living in a commoditized world is that they discount themselves. Well, anybody can do that. And the fact is nobody can do it, but they don't know that. It's one of the most amazing things in the program, Joe, And, you know, I've seen it in your eyes somewhat, too. When you begin to realize just the significance of the thing that you bring with you, you know, this amazing gift for creativity, this gift for being able to create value in the world in a way that no other entrepreneur can. So that's the secret that the entrepreneur brings into the program. Now, the secret we have is that I've unlocked this in over 6,000 people. I know the formula, I know the routine, and it takes time because one of the biggest obstacles I have right in the beginning is the entrepreneur's own disbelief, their own lack of belief in themselves. And so to a certain extent, we've got to spend some time getting them to take themselves seriously. You know, there are some entrepreneurs are very egotistical. I mean, everybody who's successful has a healthy ego, but some of them, it comes out very egotistically. And yet those same people actually don't believe in themselves. They actually don't believe in themselves, and they don't really believe how unique they are. And one of the things that I find, which is very interesting, is that the moment they do start believing in themselves, they don't have to be egotistical anymore. Yeah. All of a sudden, it just comes out in the form of these incredible insights, these amazing decisions, these incredible solutions in the marketplace, it just flows out of them, and they don't have to put up all those defenses anymore. They can just be who they are, and everybody kind of gets it. And then what they can do is they can build an organization around them, and then they can build a whole process around them, which people will pay a premium for in the marketplace. And that's the interesting thing about it is that once we can get down to that secret that the entrepreneur has, and I have the secret of how you unlock that secret. So we're putting two secrets together. Well, people that have gone through this process, for anyone listening out there, you know, let's say they're not completely sold on this and they're still kind of thinking about it, but you got them intrigued. What happens to your, let's say, typical client that is in Strategic Coach? I mean, what happens over a period of time going through your process? Well, as we indicated, there's a number of freedoms they start to realize. They've got all these freedoms in potential, but they don't actually have the freedoms in reality. And I think that the biggest freedom that gets unlocked 
is the freedom just to live by their ideals. You know, entrepreneurs are some of the most idealistic people on the world because they believe in the future in a way that very few people do. They bet on the future. I mean, they'll bet their lives. They'll bet their homes on the future. You're right. I haven't really quite thought about it that way, but yeah, they will sometimes sacrifice everything. They'll, they'll sacrifice, I mean, even their health sometimes to their detriment. They'll do that. They're really idealistic and they have enormous value systems. One of the things that I've really noticed about entrepreneurs is that things just mean an incredible amount to them. Their relationships mean an incredible amount to them. But most especially, their work means an incredible amount to them. So they have this very deep value system. Here's a very interesting insight that I have. I think it's what propels society forward. The true entrepreneurial component of society is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 10%. And those are people who are actually operate independently enough that you could say that they're entrepreneurs. Right. They create, I would say, probably 90% of the new value in society and the new wealth in society that propels the whole rest of society through tax money and through jobs and everything. I'm talking about people who are actually the engine of modern society. So I say to myself, what's my role in this? Because I've been through this as an entrepreneur. And I said, you know, Dan, how would you like to spend the rest of your life? I mean, you're now at the point where you have enough money. So money really isn't the issue for me anymore. I have a very, very high quality of life. I have a fantastic marriage and a partnership. My wife and I both run the company and we're together all the time. And we absolutely love each other's collaboration in all areas of life. And at a certain point, I said, you know, my mission statement is that by the end of my life, I will have helped more individuals take personal ownership of their future than any other person who's ever lived in history. I said, that's going to be my goal. And I said, well, if that's true, who would I want to start with that would do absolutely the most good in society? And I said, let's start with the entrepreneurs because they're the ones who are already generating all the growth, they're generating all the wealth, they're generating all the new opportunity, they're generating the new methods, the new systems. What if we could just focus on the entrepreneurs and get them to take ownership in their future? That would be 10 times what they're doing right now. What kind of payback to society would that actually be? That would be absolutely phenomenal. You know, I've heard a lot of people talk about how they're going to change the world and teach lots of people. And you are an individual that when I hear you say it and I have participated for many years in what it is that you're doing and have seen you in action, have seen the results of your clients, I absolutely believe that you have the biggest ability to do everything you say than probably anyone I've ever met. And you walk the walk. You don't just talk the talk. I know a lot of very famous people that can say all kinds of wonderful things, but behind the scenes, their life does not represent what it is that they say, and you absolutely walk your walk and talk your talk. You said something about value creation, and I want to clarify something here for people listening. There are people that can make enormous amounts of money and rip people off, not really care about their clients. One of the first things that I learned in Strategic Coach is, I don't know if you said it in these exact words, but my interpretation was money earned ethically is a byproduct of value creation. Yes. One of the things that strategic coaches really got me to focus on and think about, and it totally works for all my clients. I mean, you talk about most people sell products and services versus an experience versus a process. I now <clears throat> sell experiences at levels that I never would have had I not started thinking mm -hmm. this way. And what's great about Strategic Coach is you're constantly preaching and teaching value creation because you said these people out there, these entrepreneurs don't even recognize their unique abilities. And I believe the biggest talents, the biggest strengths that we have as entrepreneurs, we minimize and in many cases don't even understand it. And there's people that are listening to this interview right now that have enormous value that have never been able to tap into it at the levels that they could. And I know through an association with you, they can get there. I want you to kind of describe what people really sell. You know, every um, entrepreneur is out there selling something, yeah. but they're getting paid for what? For value? Well, I have this exercise that I do with the clients. I just take a sheet of paper. It's pre-printed, but you can do it on a sheet of paper. And I have them draw three columns, you know, two lines making three columns. And at the top of the first column, I write down products, second column, services, and the third column, experiences. And I said, now look at your business and do an inventory. And here's what the inventory should come up with. I want you to list in the first column everything that would qualify as a product. And a product is really a takeaway that doesn't require the salesman to go with it. Right. 
And I said in the second column, write down services. Services are also a takeaway, but the salesman comes with you because the service has to keep going on and on and on and on and on. I say, so list all those down. And I said, now in the third column, I want you to write down all the experiences. And people say, experiences? What are experiences? And I say, well, here's a way of getting at experiences. Write down every single great thing that your very best clients have ever said about you. And some people, it's tough because they don't want to say those things about themselves. But once I get them loosened up and they actually start writing, it actually comes quite freely. And they notice that over the years, their best clients have said really great things about them and many different kinds of great things, not just one great thing. I said, okay, now look at column one and think of your five best clients, five best clients you've ever had, five best customers you've ever had. Tell me which of the three columns actually was the basis of why they wanted to have an ongoing relationship with you. Was it the products? I said, probably don't even remember the products. Was it the services? Probably don't even remember the services, the experiences. And I said, that's what they remember. They remember the experiences. Everybody in the class, when I do this, they just nod and they say, well, that's very true. And I said, well, if that's very true, then why is that third column the one you're giving away for free? <laughs> And I exactly. said, and I said, and here you are, you're competing in the first column on products, and you've got 15 competitors out in the marketplace who are trying to sell the same product, and they're killing you on price every day. Services, the same thing. They're taking your services, and the moment they see it, they clone it, and they're going after you. So here you are trying to make your money on column one and column two, and the one that actually is the basis for the most creative and prosperous and productive relationships and rewarding relationships that you've ever had. That's the one you give away for free. <laughs> now, I said, well, let's now look at the third column, and why don't we flip the whole business model on its head, and why don't we take the third column, and now let's start allowing people to go through a process where they don't get just one of those experiences. They get all 10 of them that you've listed in this column. And what they're going to actually buy into is the experience. They're going to buy into the experience of having a sense of total integrity. You know how much people will pay in this world for total integrity? They will go through a process that gives them total clarity. You know how much people will pay for clarity in this world? They will go through a process where their creativity is unleashed because they're in a relationship. You know what people will pay to be creative? And so I go down the list of all the experiences. I said, now, if you had a process and we could actually put it out on paper and you could communicate it properly and show them how they go through each one of those experiences, how much do you think they'll pay for it? I'll tell you what they'll pay. They'll shortchange and eliminate all of your competitors to save money so that they can buy your third column. That's how much they'll pay for it. So it's really interesting because all of a sudden, you see, this is the secret, you know, the secret that I talked about before. Right. Because you know inside of them that they've been raging around this issue for years and years and years, feeling almost ripped off in the marketplace because they have this enormous value to give and yet they have to compete in this very, very narrow, restricted band called products and services, when in fact what they could be selling is experiences. And once they package that experience, Joe, they have no competitors. They have absolutely no competitors because who in the world can match those experiences? And most people wouldn't even understand it even if they had the capability because they don't have access to this type of knowledge base. And as far as I have ever seen, you're the only one that ever talks about this. Stuff. Well, there's an enormous number of books. There's The Experience Economy by uh, Pine and Gilmore, right. which I think is the gateway to actually learning about this. But, you know, you go through all these books and you go through all the articles. This is a subject that's being extensively written about right now. And everybody is kind of feeling around the outside of the sphere, you know. But what's lacking is... When you get to the end of these articles and books, you say, how do you do it? Right. You know, what's the methodology? That's where we differ from everywhere else. We have the methodology. We know step by step how you gain entry into this world, how you gain mastery over your own experiences, how you package those experiences, how you build an organization around them, how you build the entire communication structure around them create the cash flow model that's going to increasingly rise, you're going to be in a world where prices are going down and the price of your experience keeps going up and up and up. And not only that, people are absolutely glad to pay for it. When I go to conventions, conferences, and I start talking about this, there's two responses. Half the room is really, really angry at me. I can just see the anger in their eyes. 
when I talk about this because I'm talking about things that should not be talked about because they're holding on by a lifeline to their products and services. Right. And every year, the commissions are going down. Every year, the profit margins are going down. Every year, the complexity of their life is going up. Every year, the amount of competition is going up. And they say, you know, just let me get a few more years out of this. And I said, no, no, you don't get any more years out of this. (laughs) And then the others are sitting there, and you can just see... It's almost like a burden has been lifted from their shoulders. And what happens out of that is they get this tremendous insight. You mean it's just about me? You mean it's just about who I am? Is that all being an entrepreneur is all about? And it's just me and my unique ability properly packaged in the marketplace? Is that all that is? And I said, yeah. And it's almost like all the noise goes away and all the stuff disappears. And there's just this state of simplicity that they have That was the original vision that made them be an entrepreneur in the first place. Only now they've got 20, 30 years of experience. Now they've got money. Now they've got success. Now they've got capability. And all they have to do is reform and reassemble all the pieces that they've worked so hard to put together. And all we have to do now is capitalize on the enormous investment they've made. But now we have the total strategy in the marketplace to do that. And once you see that, it's almost like you switch from black and white to technicolor. It's like all of a sudden the world just looks totally different and you have this sense of ease, you have this sense of relaxation, and all of a sudden you have time for your life, and all of a sudden you have time for your family, and you have time for your hobbies, you have time for making enormous contributions into the community, and you're out of the rat race, you're off the treadmill, your competitors have disappeared off the radar screen, you have disappeared off their screen. So what you provide to them is a tremendous sense of leadership, a tremendous sense of relationship, a tremendous sense of creativity so that they have a direction in their life that they've never had before. They have a sense of confidence of moving forward that they've never had before. And they have an enormous sense of capability that they've never had before. And it just comes out of who you are. Now you tell me what marketing strategy by a competitor is going to interfere with that and undermine that. Well... When you have that, no one can deliver a deliverable that is anywhere near or close to that. And what it really does, not only is it a great way to package yourself because you basically made yourself competition proof, but it does wonders for you understand your own value creation when you package yourself there. So you're able to tap into all kinds of things about what you do, what you create, what you offer that you never even understood until you went through that process. And on top of that, your whole organization changes because it's all built around value creation, not just selling products and services. Because now I don't even want to do business with companies after I've learned this and used this. I mean, the way that I sell my services through my company, I know hardly anyone that can even hold a candle to doing what we do for our clients. And it's all built around value creation. And so where I want to kind of bridge together what you said is that By offering this, you're kind of sifting, sorting, and screening the best entrepreneurs to come into Strategic Coach because people that are just out there trying to make money and don't really care about selling anything of any value, it's not attractive for them to even hear this message and say, yeah, I want more of that. So you're getting a much different level of entrepreneur. And you talked about making this list of products, services, and experiences. And what I want you to kind of talk about is really what you do in Strategic Coach because You have a time system, Mm -hmm. which you've pioneered, and Mm -hmm. which is much different. And I don't for a minute want anyone listening to think that, oh, here's another time management seminar, another way to plan your day. What I really feel Strategic Coach does is creates an environment and facilitates a thinking environment. And an hour of effective, precise thinking can be worth more than a month of hard work. And some of these entrepreneurs that are listening to this are very busy. They don't want more stuff to do. They want less stuff to do. They want to be more effective. And you talk about the time and effort economy versus the results economy. Mm -hmm. And I want you to describe the time system that you have and how you actually facilitate this process in a very short period of time. People can spend a little bit of time with Strategic Coach and walk out of there feeling relieved, Mm -hmm. feeling clarity, and going out and making a lot more money and being a lot more valuable. We've painted a very, very big picture here, Joe. We're kind of talking about Harley Davidson's here, you know, but we got to go back and talk a little bit about bicycles and tricycles and training wheels because one of the things that's very, very important is that most entrepreneurs have a very screwed up time system. 
Part of the reason is too close association with big bureaucratic structures. Uh -huh. They bought into essentially what I would call a bureaucratic time system. So they're trying to be extraordinary entrepreneurs, but they're structuring themselves as if they were a bureaucrat. And so 50% of their energy and their ability to achieve results is automatically undermined just by the way they structure time. So the first thing we do, very first workshop when they come in, we're saying, you know something? I want you to think of an athlete or an entertainer. Athletes and entertainers operate by totally different time system. And what we know is that the really effective entertainers and the really effective athletes live their life in three very, very distinct frameworks. They have a framework which is called game day or showtime when they just have to be totally there and they can't be thinking about anything else. It's just when their ability pours out, they've got the right audience, they've got a time with a captured audience, a captured time, when they can just achieve extraordinary results. And it's not a long period of time. I mean, a game is three to four hours, a show is three hours. But they can achieve something there that will get people to pay extraordinary prices just to be in the presence of them. So I said, I want you to think of that from now on, that this is going to be your key work days, which we're going to call it a focus day. And it's when you get to focus your best abilities. And you don't do anything else on those days except showtime. You don't do anything else on those days except game time. But the other thing you notice about entertainers and athletes is that they take a lot of time off because they expend so much energy and they require to be so creative and so vital during that period of time that they have to have a lot of time when they're traveling and reading and on beaches and doing all sorts of other activities just to rejuvenate themselves. So what that does is they're recharging their batteries. But not only that, they're expanding themselves. By not actually doing what they do, they're actually becoming more than what they were because they're giving the other side of their life to actually expand themselves. Their intelligence is greater and their learning goes up during this period. So I want you to take that time, and we're going to create a second category over here, and we're going to call those free days. And free days, you don't do any work. You don't have anything related to work. You don't take books with you related to work. You don't take briefcases. You don't take your cell phone. You don't take your pager, your laptop, whatever. You don't make any phone calls. You don't have anything to do with business because that's supposed to be your rejuvenation days. So we have those two days. But wait a minute, wait a minute. What about rehearsal? What about learning how to do the play? What about arranging my life so I can have those free days? A lot of different things happen in rehearsal. You have to become totally familiar with everything that's going to be required. So you have those great days, those great showtime, that great game day. And at the same time, you want to free yourself up so you can have really free time so there's nothing hanging over into your free time. So we call those buffer days. And I just use the word buffer as the in-between. That's what a buffer right. is. And in the buffer is the stuff. In the buffer is all the details. In the buffer is backstage. It's the backstage part of it. Focus days are front stage. On the buffer days, we're backstage. We're doing the delegations. We're adding the new capabilities. We're mastering our lines. We're preparing the performance. We're doing everything. So I put this out in the first workshop, and I said, I want you to experiment with this time system. And you don't have to master it. You won't master it in... 90 days. In our program, Joe, as you know, we come back every 90 days. We have a full day of strategic coach every 90 days. And I said, in the next 90 days, I'd like you to try out 10 days when you're just going to be focused the way that I say you're focused. You're going to have free days, but I want you to have certain free days when you don't call the office, you go cold turkey. And then I want you to have certain days where you just give yourself the right to be backstage and just do backstage work without any thought that you should be doing selling or out working with clients, or you should be taking time off. You should just give yourself the right to that. So out of the 90 days, let's start with 10, 10, and 10, and just see how those days are different from the other 60 days that we have. Well, they come back and they say, gosh, you know, the results I got on those 10 days that were focused day, I never believed I could get those kinds of results. And I said, you're like an entertainer, an athlete. We can't believe what they can do in three hours. But you know why they can do that? Because of the way they structure their lives. I say, you couldn't do it because you don't structure your life that way. And then they go away for the free days, and they said, boy, oh boy, I haven't been relaxed in 10 years because I really got relaxed on my free days. And I said, notice what a difference is when you just give yourself permission just to be free. 
your mind isn't on what you should be doing or anything. And then they do the buffer days and they say, my staff and I got more done on one day because I gave myself permission. That's all I had to be doing. I wasn't dividing it. So they had my undivided attention for a whole day, where before it was five minutes here, 10 minutes here, 30 minutes here. And they say, what I could now do with my life that I couldn't do, and I'm talking just the first 30 days, they're getting this. And then what they realize is that there's enormous numbers of things in their life that don't support that system. And that's why it's three years in the first instance before we get to the upper levels of the program. You have to put in the three years because you're going to have to go in and reorganize relationships. You're going to have to reorganize structures. Most of all, you're going to have to reorganize your own habits. There's going to be clients that you can't deal with anymore because they don't support this system. There's going to be opportunities that you used to think that were fantastic opportunities, which you can't do anymore because they don't support the system. So it becomes kind of like a law unto yourself that totally protects you. And once we get the time system in place, then we can start looking at, okay, those focus days. you got the time now. We've reserved the time. Let's move on to a concept called unique ability. Since you're giving yourself that time, really what should you be doing on those focus days? And then we begin to see that they haven't really zeroed in on what I call unique ability, and a unique ability has four qualities to it. First of all, it's a superior skill. It's something that everybody's been telling them all their life. You know, you're really, really great at this. You should do it all the time. And they say, yeah, 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 yeah. And the reason they say that is because it comes easy to them and they can't see how significant it is. But everybody's telling them, you are fantastic at this. You should only do this. So they start doing that. They love doing that activity. If the truth were told, they would do it for nothing. And in fact, in my case, earlier in my entrepreneurial career, <laughs> I did do it for nothing. <laughs> I just stayed with it because I loved it so much. The third thing is that it's very energizing for themselves. It has the quality that they can do it all day, and at the end of the day, they have more energy than when they started the day. But not only they have the energy, but everybody working around them gets the energy. It's like a great performer, great athlete. They communicate energy, and it's the energy that they're generating for themselves that gets communicated to the audience or to the stands. And then finally, they never stop improving in this area. No matter what level of performance they hit, they immediately see, oh, there's another level I can get to. And that goes on for the rest of their life, and that's where genius comes from. When someone uses their focus days to devote to those unique ability activities, and they allow themselves to have the free days to rejuvenate themselves, and they allow themselves to have the buffer days to actually do all the backstage work so that their mind is completely free when they're doing their focus days. That genius starts coming out, and that's the genius that goes back to the value creation model that we were talking about before, because when people write great things about you, what they're picking up on is that genius coming through. Well, let me say this at this point in the interview. I'm sure there's a lot of people that sounds like, man, this is absolutely fantastic. Is this hard to do? Is it expensive? Mm -hmm. Is it time consuming? And can someone do it on their own? I mean, why listen to you? Why go to strategic coach? The answer that I would have for that is it's simple or hard. Something that's simple oftentimes is very, very hard. But simple can also be easy. The biggest obstacle that clients bring into the program is their own sense of complexity and complication. They live in a world that's very complex. They live in a world that's very complicated. And so they've kind of bought into that if I'm going to have a solution, it's going to be a complicated and complex solution. But in fact, the only thing that can solve complexity and complication is simplicity. So some people come into the program and they're just complete learners. They just want to be coached and they're willing to make whatever changes that are necessary. You know, they're not making the changes for me. They're making the changes for themselves because it's their freedom that is being realized. So that can happen really quite quickly, and I've seen people just make extraordinary progress right off the bat. And what they do is they say, look, I'm taking the time to come here. I'm paying to be here. Some people come from long distances. The time outlay can be as many as five days for a single day's workshop. And they say, if I'm going to make that investment, I'm going to come and say, okay, let's be partners on this. I'll bring everything necessary to the deal. And that happens quite quickly. And some people are skeptical. You know, they come in, they're believing enough that they're going to make the investment, but they're going to check it out step by step by step. They're not going to take the whole thing. And I say to people, I can't be a judge on what your learning style is. 
you're going to do it your way. We're always here. We've always got a workshop for you, and you're going to do it at your own pace. It is difficult, Joe. It's not easy. And part of the reason is that entrepreneurs are rugged individualists. Describe it. What I mean is that they were a rugged enough individual that they believed in themselves so much that they could do something that nobody else believed in. And what they had to do is they had to rely on their own confidence, their own ability to create their own confidence. They had the ability to actually sustain a great deal of frustration, even rejection, insecurity, lack of resources. And that kind of made them tough, but that's good. There's a good part to being a rugged individualist. But there's a bad part, too, because they develop an attitude that I'll do it completely on my own. And guess what? Nobody in this world, after a certain initial level of success, does it on their own. I think that the myth of rugged individualism has really confused a great deal of people because rugged individualism is the starting point, but you very quickly have to change gears and you have to become superb at teamwork. And my idea of teamwork is to look at where my unique ability is and draw a circle around it and everything outside that circle I'm looking for somebody else to do that. Right. Well, in this case, their unique ability is that they have the thing that's going to eventually show up as that unique value creation process. And that's all I want them to hang on into the program. And everything else in the program, I want them to look for someone else to help them. And one of the things they have to look to is someone who's going to guide them through the process. And I'm going to be the guide who takes them through the process. Or one of my coaches, we have many other coaches in the program who will take them through the process. Once they start getting the initial success, the resistance disappears, and they start saying, wow, this is the school I always wanted for myself, and it's just geared to me. I've heard you say before that there's two types of suffering. There's long-term and there's short-term. You decide which kind you want, and people listening to this are going to find this to be insightful and interesting and valuable and that it seems like there's some things that they can do to make differences and other people may discount it. The fact is the next three years are going to go by anyway. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're going to be an entrepreneur for as long as you're going to be an entrepreneur. And the type of client that's going to come into the strategic coach has so many things going in their favor. I mean, anyone that's even listening to this interview has an enormous amount in their favor because they're open-minded. They're not so egotistical to think that they know it all and there's no other way to get better. And you certainly are the guy that teaches the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. When people come for coaching and they want it from the best, they go to you. What is it that people are going to really have to give up in order to go into strategic coach and what are they going to gain by doing so? I mean, someone's just thinking, well, this sounds interesting, but how do they make this decision to do it versus not doing it and why should they do it? Well, it's a great decision. We teach our salespeople, actually, to ask this question when they're on the phone with people who are just calling in cold. The question is, in the last six months, have you made a fundamental decision to transform your life in some way? And the thing that you have to give up in the process is your old way of being an entrepreneur. And that's scary because you're going into new territory. And I found that some people have made that because they have a blazing future vision in front of them, and they're willing to give up, as they've given up many things in their life, to get to a higher vision. So that's one kind of person who transforms himself by what lies ahead. And then there's the other people who transform themselves because the pain of what they're doing right now is getting too intense. And that's the commoditized world of competing in the world of products and services. So it's either going to be a carrot or it's going to be a stick, But in both cases, they have to transform themselves out of the old form. I tell a story of two caterpillars who are out for a crawl, and they're just discussing things that are going on in caterpillar land. And overhead, a butterfly comes by, and one of them looks up with a sneer and says, you know, you'll never get me up in one of those things. And (laughs) it's kind of like that. It's a metamorphosis that they have to go through a cocoon stage. And basically, the strategic coach is that cocoon. They have to go into a kind of an unnatural form, if you will, for a year or two years, three years. And out the other side, the caterpillar becomes a butterfly. I don't want to push that metaphor too far, but that's really if they could think in terms of changing into something else. And I think they want to do that. I sense, first of all, Joe, the conversation I can have with you now in the 21st century is not the conversation I could have had 20 years ago. And I think that there are possibilities for the kind of experience-based business that is now available in the 21st century, which simply wasn't available 
two decades ago when I was going bankrupt twice. <laughs> right, exactly. And I think all of those talents that in many cases make us tons of money, allow us to develop enormous relationships, have the possibility for these great opportunities, if that energy is not harnessed and directed right, it could be very self-destructive. It could work its way out in workaholism, damaging relationships, completely losing any focus whatsoever of what it is you got into this game for in the first place. And I mean, when you say coach, a lot of people these days say, we do coaching, we do coaching. Mm. And the way that you do it is on such a deeper level than anyone else that actually I've ever seen do coaching. And the time is going to go by anyway. I mean, anyone listening to this, the next year is going to go by. We all live in the same 24-hour yeah. period as everyone else. They're going to spend their time doing something anyway. And my suggestion to everyone listening is I'm not getting paid to be going to strategic coach. I pay to go to strategic coach. Mm -hmm. It is something that I will continue to do as long as I continue to receive value. And it's something that has had such an impact in how much money I make and the value that I deliver and the amount of time that I spend. And I never have gotten out of it something that, oh, I don't have time to do this. Going to strategic coach, participating in your thinking processes doesn't take time. It actually makes time. It doesn't cost money. It actually makes money. It gets you focused in ways that I've never seen anything that even holds a candle to it. So what would be the next step for a person out there that, let's say they're working all the time and despite their success, they still feel unfulfilled and they're looking for a course of action. What do they do next? Well, I think the first thing that they would want to do, Joe, is that they want to find out whether they actually qualify for the program. So the best way to do that is simply to phone us and fill in the application form. We will take a look at the information to see if they actually qualify for the program. And then we will look, and there will be a conversation between them and one of our sales personnel. And what we're looking also for is motivation. Is this the individual who's actually made that decision to transform? So we're going to go through a screening process first, and we have to see if they actually qualify for the program. Then we start zeroing them in on the proper track. We start talking to them about dates, when they could start. And we get into the entire information educational process that's actually going to allow them to place themselves in the right group of people. Awesome. Dan, I could easily spend several hours talking with you about these topics and so much more, but we've only got so much time here left on this interview. You know, what is this all about? There's a listener out there that's going to be intrigued, and this makes sense, and they've got a choice to make. They are obviously listening to us talk because in some part of their life, their business, their personal life, they know there's an opportunity to do a heck of a lot more, and they know there's more value than they're actually getting paid for that they've been able to leverage. What are the choices and options they have available to them? Why should they do strategic coach versus not doing it? Well, I want to tell you an experience that I have, Joe, and it's with people who haven't been my clients, and I've met them in various venues traveling around the United States and Canada, and they're in their late 50s, 60s, 70s oftentimes, and huge successes. I mean, these are people who have reputations. You get talking to them, and I notice that they have a tremendous sadness to their lives. On the outside, someone looking in could have no comprehension of why this individual would be sad. And it has to do with something that was unrealized. It has something to do with something that was unfulfilled. There was a potential that was not realized. And you have to look at your entrepreneurial life in a different kind of fashion because most entrepreneurs kind of think that they did it themselves. And I know for a fact that I did not do it by myself, but not only that, the very fact that I could be an entrepreneur, I did not do by myself. What I mean by it is that certain individuals, again, I come back to about probably 10% of the population, are given an enormous gift, and it's a gift of a certain kind of vision about the future. It's a gift of a certain kind of self-confidence. It's a gift of a certain capability of achieving results that is not available to the rest of the population. And the means are supposed to be used to create enormous value in the rest of society. It's a gift to transform yourself because you have a control over your time, you have a control over your money, you have a control over your relationship that no other human being or a group of human beings have on the planet. And it's your job to take that gift and transform that into an enormous value creation in the world. 
And the more that you're able to do that, the more who you are really comes out in the world. So I see them with their golf memberships at 60. I see them living in their gated communities. I see them with their three or four homes. I see them with all their toys. And I see them with status positions in their communities and being on this board and this board. And none of that was enough of a payoff to get over the sadness that they had that they didn't use the gift properly. I've even talked to some people about that, and they say, you know, you're right about that, but it's too late. It's just too late, Dan. I don't have the energy now to start over again. I would love, if I was 35 or 40 years old, I would love to be able to start your program. And you know something, Joe? I've had 70-year-olds start the program, and within two or three years, they were right at the game that they wanted to be. So the age isn't really the difference. It doesn't matter. But it is the willingness to see your life as a gift and then to transform that gift into extraordinary value creation in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the last thing that I'm going to say is the two things that I've really got out of Strategic Coach and that I've seen the majority of people get out of Strategic Coach, and you have done such a phenomenal job of teaching this and having your coaches teach it to all of your clients of Strategic Coach, is that two of the most important areas of life are confidence and gratitude. You don't do anything well if you're not operating from a level of confidence unless you're just flat out lucky. And secondly, even if you do things really well, even if you do make a ton of money, if you're lacking in gratitude, you really don't have any true, genuine happiness. And there's so many ways and so many things that are done in Strategic Coach, but what seems to come out of it the most is people walk out of there every time they're in Strategic Coach with a heck of a lot more gratitude and a heck of a lot more confidence. And when you walk around the world with those two areas really enhanced, you make more money, you take time off, you appreciate the people that you're with, everything just gets better. Dan, how do people get more information about Strategic Coach? We have a 800 number, Joe, and all they have to do is phone 1-800-387-3206. And if you're outside North America, it's area code 416-531-7399. And you can go to our website, and it will give you complete information on how to get started. The website is www.strategiccoach, all one word, strategiccoach.com. Excellent. And just the mere fact of calling up Strategic Coach and talking to what you call a salesperson is a business lesson in and of itself because you have put together a fabulous team of people and just the way everyone is dealt with and the clients are dealt with, everyone will see that they are truly dealing with a first-class organization. Thank you very much, Joe. You have now reached the end of this presentation. For more information on other Strategic Coach products or services, please call 1-416-531-7399 or 1-800-387-3206 or visit our website at www.strategiccoach.com.